It was a number of weeks ago when I was last dipping into Paul's letter to the Galatians for a few thoughts for the day. And I want to come back to this marvellous letter, almost certainly Paul's earliest recorded letter. Today, let's look together at the very beginning of the letter, the first five verses of chapter one. Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead and all the brothers who are with me. To the churches of Galatia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now these opening verses are simply bursting with Paul's agenda for the Galatians. The urgency of the message which he's about to come to spills over even into, his, into this introduction. Paul had only recently established these churches in Galatia, modern day Turkey, but already false teachers had moved in who were adding things to the gospel of faith in Christ alone. These people were saying that Jesus dying on the cross was not enough to win our salvation. They were saying that we have to do things as well, Jewish religious practices in particular, to make ourselves acceptable to God. But if you add anything to faith in Christ, what happens is that you subtract from faith in Christ. You are saying that Jesus did not do everything for us. There are things that we need to do as well. Jesus plus really means Jesus minus. And Paul was so desperately concerned for these young Christians who were in danger of having their trust in the true gospel undermined. And so he sent them this letter as fast as he could. In these opening verses, there are two things that he wants the Galatian Christians to know. The first thing is that the gospel, the true gospel, is from God. Paul introduces himself as an apostle. Verse 1, he spoke for Jesus with Jesus' authority. Now, let's not misunderstand what Paul is doing here. He's not concerned for his own ego. Paul's message and Paul's authority as an apostle were very closely connected. Paul's apostleship was from God, just as Paul's gospel was from God. So if the false teachers were trying to belittle Paul, that was a way of undermining the message that Paul preached. In the same way, if someone from a different country today were to reject the British ambassador there, they would be rejecting the Queen. The ambassador stands and speaks with the authority of the Queen. And still today, Paul, in his writings, stands and speaks with the authority of God. Now, some people today reckon that we can just pick and choose with Paul's writings and sort out the bits we like and the bits we don't like. Have you heard people talking that way? Things like, we don't believe this or that verse today. We know better now. Paul got it wrong. But if what Paul writes is in the Bible and the Bible is God's word, then it carries the authority of God because Paul is an apostle. His apostleship comes from God and his message comes from God. And secondly, what, what Paul wants these Christian churches in Galatia to know is that the gospel is about Christ's free rescue. Let me read verses three to five again. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of God our Father, to whom be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now this could just look like any conventional greeting, grace, peace. But again, these are loaded terms. Grace means an undeserved free gift. That was the very thing that was at stake in Galatia in terms of their understanding of the gospel. In chapter 5, verse 4, Paul writes, you have fallen away from grace. That was their danger. So Paul wants to tell them in this letter about grace, what it really means. And also he wants to tell them about peace, 
from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this peace isn't a warm, fuzzy feeling, it's an objective reality. It's an absence of hostility and warfare, the fact that we can be no longer God's enemies, but his friends, even his family. It means a right relationship with God. Then let's look at what Jesus has done. He gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age. The Christian faith is all about a rescue. And he gave himself to make this possible. It's not what we do for God, but what he does or has done for us. Some people think that we have to perform all sorts of religious duties or clock up enough good works in order to make ourselves acceptable to God. However, it's not about us closing the gap between God and man by what we do, but it's all to do with what Jesus has done. He has brought us out of the era of rebellion against God, where everyone lives on themselves in selfishness and sin, and he has brought us into the future, where there will be no more sin, suffering, sadness or sickness, into relationship with God forever. And while we do not experience that in full measure now, we shall in heaven to come. What a marvellous statement about what is the very heart of the gospel in these opening verses of Galatians. Jesus has done it all for us. There is nothing for us to add in except to believe with humility and thankfulness.